evolutionary theory and psychology, mating intelligence. For Psychology 182, History and Systems, California State University, Fresno, Professor Mike Botwin. Hi, Dr. Mike Botwin here. This is our last installment of our evolutionary psychology presentation in our History of Psychology class, and it covers a relatively new concept in evolutionary psychology, mating intelligence, which has to do with your mind as being the biggest sex organ that you have. Now, the individuals who are proponents of mating intelligence theory basically say that our brains evolved as entertainment systems for the opposite sex. And those of us who were best at entertaining the opposite sex would get the best mates and get ahead the best in the evolution game. So let's take a quick look at some of the very basics of mating intelligence. This topic is covered in far greater detail in my evolutionary psychology class. So let's look at mating intelligence. In 2001, evolutionary psychologist Jeffrey Miller published The Mating Mind. And here he postulates that those individuals who have the best minds for reproduction will effectively use those minds to get the best mates. This is one of the theories in contention for why did our brains get so big, uh, which is one of the big evolutionary mysteries. And there are many different theories as to why our brains have gotten so bloody big. Miller says we compete with members of our own sex for members of the opposite sex, which is basically Darwinian sexual selection. But Miller goes on to say that our brains increased in size so that we could outcompete those individuals who were vying for the same high quality mates that were desired by other individuals. So mating intelligence is a very complex thing. Since Miller has postulated this, other people like Glenn Gehrer have added to the literature, and there have been several books, uh, including a pop one about mating intelligence and how to use it effectively. We're going to just take a very brief tour of one area of mating intelligence, mental fitness indicators. So mating intelligence, as discussed by Gehrer, Miller, and Murphy, is roughly the mind's reproductive system. And those individuals that are the best at entertaining and interacting with the opposite sex will get the best mates. If you look at this little cartoon here, you can see that the one caveman is signing a bunch of autographs for cave women, and the other two are left behind by the women. And the caption reads, hmm, oh, he's the guy who discovered fire. Obviously a big brain thing to do, so he's getting all the attention. Now, many human domain-specific mental traits have evolved through sexual selection, according to Miller, as mental fitness indicators. You can see here by this other cartoon with Stone Age people that the little guy with the big club is a highly desirable mate. So, walk carefully, carry a big stick. Many human capacities evolved because they gave reliable signals of intelligence to individuals. 
So Miller and company postulate there are these mental fitness indicators and they show off our big brains. This is a form of intersexual selection and it's primarily men showing off their mental fitness indicators the same way a bird might do a mating dance or a peacock may display his tail feathers. So let's look at several of these mental fitness indicators and see how they fit into this theory. First mental fitness indicator, language. Here we have the famous Cyrano de Bergerac, and he is making a famous speech to Roxanne, who he thinks does not care for him because of all well, the nose thing. But he can wax poetically. So being able to use language, have interesting conversations, tell stories during courtship, is a major mental fitness indicator those individuals that can string stories together probably have been important to human history since our savannah dwelling days when groups of humans were gathered in the evening around campfires telling stories to each other. In modern evolutionary research in the dating and mating realm, one of the best predictors of lack of success in dating is a man who is quote-unquote boring on a for first date. He doesn't have that gift of gab. Artist. It seems like every woman loves a starving artist. And you might wonder about starving artists because it's kind of counterintuitive. Starving artists don't, by default, make a lot of money. But, being able to produce ornamental or representational pieces of art shows off massive brain power. So women are most likely interested in the mental fitness indicators of the artist, even though it may not directly relate to current levels of income. Well, the next category is kind of a fuzzy one. It's morality. And morality has to do with displaying attractive virtues such as kindness, honesty, heroism, humility, or gift giving. It takes intelligence to do these things. If one looks at the ads on things like Match.com, Plenty of Fish, or any of those dating sites, and you were to look at women's profiles, you're going to find many of the characteristics that are desirable in a mate show up as morality. Almost every woman's profile talks about honesty. There are many men who are heroes, and sometimes women's ads uh, look for specific characteristics like a man who wears a uniform with the implication that they may be a first responder in law enforcement, a firefighter, or the like, and heroism is a virtue that's highly valued. A recent study of World War II Medal of Honor winners found that the men who had won the Medal of Honor, which is the highest American award for bravery during uh, war time, had significantly more children than those men who were combat veterans of World War II but had not won that award. So bravery ends up getting someone greater reproductive success. Honesty, as I've already talked about, very important. In between marriages, I used some of the online dating sites in the early days, and the women at the time were very weary because a couple of them had gotten involved in relationships 
with married men, and that was devastating to them. Nowadays, with more advanced search techniques uh, and the amount of information on the web, that doesn't happen as often, but women like honesty. And they like for guys to buy him a gift now and then, too. Shows off his resources. Humor. Probably my favorite mental fitness indicator. Humor involves the ability to produce amusing verbal and nonverbal behaviors. And let's face it, if again you look at the personal ads, you find that women far more than men are looking for guys with a great sense of humor. Humor does show intelligence. In studies investigating humor, one of the most interesting things that I have found is that the average male professional comedian has one standard deviation higher level of intelligence than non-comedian males. So, funny guys generally are smart guys. And it takes a great deal of intelligence to be able to tell a joke, to plan a joke, to execute telling a joke or other kind of type of humor. Sorry. Finally, the last mental fitness indicator that I'm going to talk about, music. It does take intelligence to be able to produce music. And this general mental fitness indicator takes in complex rhythm, drumming, or dancing. So you can see why rap and hip hop artists would be high on this mental fitness indicator. And many rap and hip hop artists start from modest means, use the money that they create from music and start companies and businesses that end up being extremely profitable. For example, Sean John uh, is a leading clothing line and there are many other rappers who have done very well doing this. To tell you one story, my son, David, came to me one day when he was in high school and said, Dad, I want to talk to you about something. Well, that always makes a parent get a little bit on guard. So I kind of girded my loins and I said, Okay, David, what do you want to talk about? And he said, My friends and I are forming a band. Well, every teenage boy aspires to be in a band because it brings wealth and women, and all kinds of other good benefits. And and I looked at David, and I was a little bit uh, puzzled as why he was going to want to be in a band. He has some very talented friends. And so my next question to David was, well, just what are you going to do in this band? You don't play an instrument of any kind. And he told me that his friends were going to teach him how to play the bass. And he assured me that it was relatively easy to play the bass. And they would teach him a couple of chords. And he would basically stand in the back, thump out the chords, and keep the bass line going. And then when he further told me that his friend has equipment that he can borrow and it wasn't going to cost me a dime, I was all in, said, go for it. Unfortunately, the band lasted about two weeks, and they never scored a gig. And now David is selling things to listen to music rather than making the music himself. But he's in line with dear old dad, who also does not have any musical ability. So, mental fitness indicators, interesting things. Uh, One last note on music as a mental fitness indicator. A few years back, uh, Charles Hogue, Harrison Schmidt, and I did a study of the top 
male R&B artist and hip hop artist and their reproductive success and found that the average hat, uh, rap and hip hop artist who was in the top 50 billboard ratings had significantly more children than the average American male matched for that age. So this concludes our discussion of evolutionary psychology. We've taken it from pre-Darwinian days with discussions of Lamarck and Raz Darwin and brought it up to some modern issues. I have the firm belief that understanding evolutionary principles allow us to understand ourselves in a more enlightened way. And no matter what area of psychology you're moving into, evolution will still play an important and increasingly important role. There is much evolutionary work in personality and social psych and an increasing number, amount of work in things like developmental and cognitive and other areas. So, hopefully, we can continue on this track. That's all for now. We'll see you in the next video. Bye now. This has been a We Have Couches video production. Copyright 2020, Professor Mike Botwin, all rights reserved.